Hi. We've been talking about viruses off and on and I'd like to bring up the subject of uh, HPV or human papillomavirus and HSV, herpes simplex virus. There's one, there's six, and there's seven. These are very, very common infections in the population. And although HPV is primarily transmitted in a sexual manner, uh, could be oral genital, but it's still sexually transmitted, uh, HSV or herpes uh, is something that people in the old days used to call a cold sore or a fever blister. It's actually from the virus. And the virus likes to hide out, in that case, in the nerve endings, and so it can become very tricky to treat. Okay? The most important aspect of uh, being aware of these viral infections is that they can be precursors to cancer. In many, many years ago, before we knew um, really the power of HPV virus uh, to cause cellular abnormality, uh, many, many people who had abnormal pap smears were getting total hysterectomies because of the uh, terrible um, abnormal cellular appearance of the cervical cells that were infected with HPV. Thanks to research of many physicians, and one of them that uh, was at my alma mater, Columbia uh, College of Physicians and Surgeons, did research to show that this is a viral infection, and a viral infection can be eradicated successfully and uh, obviate the need for a person to have a hysterectomy. So there are many different strains of HPV, but the ones that are most most pathologic and cancer-causing are 16 and 18. And unfortunately, we have available to us a, um, an inoculation, uh, they call it Gardasil, for these two types of HPV. However, I have patients in my practice at this time who had the Gardasil injection and still managed to get cervical cancer uh, HPV 16 and it is a very difficult cancer to treat successfully because it is often undiagnosed until it's at a later, later stage and uh, other organs and tissues that are contiguous to the cervix and the uterus are involved. So I would caution everyone to have an appreciation for the potential harm that these viruses can cause you and to um, and females to get checked for HPV. Um, the testing for HPV, aside from a, a tissue swab, um, is uh, generally not available in a blood form. I do have testing for that in my office uh, in a blood form if someone were to uh, be interested in it. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the herpes virus we can uh, check for with uh, antibody titers in a simple test that's available um, and under insurance coverage. So I just want you to understand that having these viruses in a chronic infection situation can predispose you to developing head and neck and cervical cancer, and so it's very important to be aware of it. Thank you.